First of all, I would like to make a few of the and to ask all them to produce themselves and to say in which way they are connecting the development. Um, Monica, maybe you, we can start with you. Okay, can you hear me, Bob? Yes. Uh, so hi, nice to meet you all and uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, I'm a social psychologist and I'm an associate level teacher at, uh, at ADA. And uh, I have like two hats in this uh, topic because one is uh, 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 experience uh, as a vice dean for nine years, uh, mainly uh, in charge for, uh, for international affairs. So uh, I really kind of have seen how, how this works from, uh, from all sides, basically. And also I'm a kind of keen uh, 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 member of the, uh, of uh, uh, exchange. So actually, I had I think at least nine, ten uh, uh, Erasmus uh, uh, teaching uh, experience. So actually, uh, good ones, bad ones, also uh, rejected ones. I mean, when I approached then a partner and they just didn't answer, or they said that nobody is interested, and so on. So I and I had really some really great experience and. Uh, have some places where I'm going back uh, uh, when I can because it's it's really good. Uh, and uh, my my kind of uh, third hat is a researcher hat since I'm a member of the Intercultural Psychology and Education Institute at our faculty, and uh, we are uh, in cooperation also with our international office at the university level and also at our faculty level, and we are offering the intercultural trainings for incoming and outgoing students as well as we organize several staff week, uh, uh, one week uh, uh, programs uh, for um, staff members of our partners. So uh, I think I, I really have some experience of uh, uh, what's going on in this uh, Erasmus field. Okay, thank you, Monica. So we'll move forward to Luca. Hello, everybody. My name is Luca Mercozzi. I'm currently the head of international mobility in Roma Pre University as well as the Erasmus Institutional Coordinator. So my role is well connected with the teaching mobility inside, not only inside the Erasmus program, as you perfectly know, uh, the main mobility actions of the Erasmus program are the key action 103 limited to the European Union uh, higher education area and the uh, key action 107 that has no boundaries and takes place worldwide and both these actions include teaching mobility even if in my view it has an impact slightly more significant in the key action 107 for the reasons I will expose later well, my role in Roma Pre University, among others, I mean, the role connected to the teaching mobility is basically to select the applications of my colleagues. I'm a professor too, of course, of Italian literature, but I uh, follow all the departments uh, uh, in, in the Erasmus program. So my role is to select the applications of my colleagues willing to spend uh, teaching mobility abroad and to review and select the projects that will undergo the selection to receive possibly a funding. So this is my connection to the teaching mobility. Obviously, of course, in the past years, I, I, I had teaching mobili mobilities everywhere in Europe, but uh, as from, uh, since I am the institutional coordinator, since I have to select I mean the commission, in the committee who selects the, the, um, the applications of the colleagues, I'm not uh, having teaching mobilities anymore because I, I'd rather, I mean, I, I, I'm, otherwise I have to, I, I should select my mobility and it's not uh, polite, let me say so. So this is my role in teaching mobility in my university. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Luca, and we'll go to Vratislav. Greetings, everybody. Thank you for the word and the opportunity. My name is Vratislav Kozak. I'm the head of International Relations Office at the Rectorate of Charles University. 
And as such, I have as a part of my office also the, the Erasmus office, which is interconnected with the IRO. So in that, of course, the teaching mobility is a very important part of our job. And as well as an academician that has a background in history, I myself always have been even looking for this topic from the second side of the coin, so to say. So even as an academician, I have had a great interest in, in this teaching mobility and whatever challenges and opportunities might arise from it. But to be honest, much quite clear, my opinion is after, after starting as a head of IRO, because then I see the, all, the, all the administratory difficulties that come with it and all the opportunities that are there for the future, not only talking about the, the modernization of Erasmus, program but everything that comes with it so I'm very hopeful that we can put everything together and from what I saw with the new website which is really perfect and it was actually something that I wanted to mention as some of the answers for the question that was said by Ignacio so that is really good initiative to see thank you okay thank you all so now we'll go for the second round of questions so uh, why do you think teaching mobility is important to you and how do you think teaching mobility affect students, uh, higher education staff or the university members? Um, if you want, we can preserve the order. Or Okay, it's fine. Uh, since I'm the psychologist in the group, uh, maybe I, I start with uh, some kind of psychological issues. I think uh, for me, it's the most important part is trust actually and the familiarity. Uh, so uh, when I started to be vice dean, I started to go for uh, uh, for monitoring and also for teaching uh, uh, opportunities because uh, that's how we could uh, actually uh, be a trust uh, between the institutions. So uh, it also kind of like tripling down toward the, uh, toward the students uh, because then the teachers can say that, oh, I know somebody from that university or, or this person visited and so on. Uh, so uh, also academic trust. I think it's very important uh, as a as a new uh, European country. I think it's uh, there are still uh, uh, tensions uh, between uh, old European countries and new new European countries, and I think it's it's important to see that uh, that actually how much uh, in the last twenty years this kind of uh, Euro European harmonization of higher education actually resulted really kind of similar programs, similar curriculums. Uh, uh, similar level of uh, teaching and so on. So uh, for me, it, uh, personally, it was uh, very important as an administrator of the program to build this kind of trusting relationship with partner institutions. And uh, that, that really goes through with, uh, with this kind of teacher exchange. So it's, uh, I think, important. And for me, myself, it was, it was always a, a very interesting kind of methodological uh, experience to see this kind of still very different type of types of uh, academic cultures and uh, to learn these academic cultures which is also important when we're thinking about uh, uh, the incoming students so their difficulties can be understood when they are coming from a very different academic culture or even different kind of like uh, available help for them and so on different kind of expectations also different kind of communication different uh, level of politeness for example toward professors and uh, and different kind of so this this one these things really uh, you can you can read about them but uh, it, it it's so different uh, if you experience it yourself. So for, for these two things, perhaps, uh, I mean, so many things already was mentioned during the day, so I don't want to repeat everything, but perhaps that's something which is, uh, for me, it's especially important, this kind of trust and, uh, and learning and kind of learning and harmonizing uh, this uh, European teaching methods and curriculums, which go through these kind of personal relationships. Okay, thank you, Monica. So, Luca, could you try to address the same question? Yes, of course. Thank you. So, in my view, why is teaching mobility, mobility important? Uh, um, well, in my view, teaching mobility is one of the most important aspects of mobility. 
if, we, if now we are in a very challenging and changing times, but it, let's look at the teaching mobility in the traditional sense, as we looked at it as for now, as it has been until today, let's say. So teaching mobility has been, and it will be very important in many aspects, not only for the educational impact on students, of course. Well, in most cases, the programs support uh, teacher, the mobility of teachers held by teaching staff who already have a scientific relationship or an organizational relationship with, uh, with their colleagues. So in the traditional mobility, as we know it uh, as for now, uh, staff need an invitation to move. Usually you don't invite uh, an unknown person. So this means that true teacher mobility, mutual relationships are strengthened, Common research programs are developed, teaching strategies are enforced, common activities such as dual or joint degrees can be set up and more. Of course, this, all of this is in addition to the primary effort and the primary effect of the teaching mobility, which is to allow students to deal with a different methodology and a different voice from that of common reference, aiming to a collective growth to the tumbling down boundaries, methodological or linguistical boundaries uh, within the uh, higher education area, the European higher education area. So in the past years, teaching mobility had this role to um, make, I mean, make the paths of different institutions uh, go together for a while and connect and give each other a reciprocal sense. So in my view, teaching mobility is extremely important, has been extremely important until now in a traditional way, and we will manage the transformation of teaching mobility in the future, but it will be a core business, it will be central in our uh, higher education area. Okay, and uh, we'll move forward to Bratitla. Thank you. Well, what's left to say after Monica and Luca? It's really important, I think, to, to concern yourselves with one fact. I cannot speak for different European universities or countries, but I can speak for Czech Republic. And here, uh, the teaching mobility remains all the time kind of on the sidelines of things because we have the student mobility is one big impact factor. Then we have the academic mobility concerned with science, that the mobility of not teachers but scientists that are going to meet with their colleagues and create new projects and new opportunities in science. But then we have the teaching mobility which here again is the third wheel so to say. It's not that highly popular, it's not that highly sought after. So it's something that really is close to my heart because whenever I started as a student, my first impression and my, my dream was not to be a scientist, but to be a teacher at university. So that was always something that I wanted to push forward as important factor. And I think that the, the teachers have much more broader scale of context that they can take after and they can bring to their own institution because they do not meet only their colleagues from the scientific departments, the different teachers, but they meet also the students. So they are really the connecting point of both of these worlds, so to say, which is really important when building the new context for the future of the institutions and the universities. So I think that the most, the, the biggest important factor of the quality, you know, high quality teaching mobility is building new bridges between the institutions, not only keeping the current ones alive, but bringing new contacts, creating basically a new web of contacts and understanding and cooperation. And of course, even new opportunities for the future of European Union and the European institutions. So I think that their input will be very important for the future. And that is something that they can bring back, of course, with them, is traveling the know-how, not only in the science, what they are teaching, but also in the processes from their own alma mater institutions, which is also very important. But basically, 
to really listen to their input when they are coming back from these trips or even when they are currently on one, then they can have a huge impact for both places, the home institution and even the visiting one. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Vladislav. Now we'll go to the third question, namely, what is the, the biggest challenge for quality teaching mobility? So, uh, Monica? Okay, uh, I, I don't want to be with the first name, it's not polite. Uh, anyway, the biggest challenge, I think, uh, uh, time and space, basically. Uh, so to find the, uh, the, the place of, uh, of uh, teaching mobility in the curriculum and in the academic year. And uh, uh, I think that we have a really good structure for, uh, uh, for student mobility and we really kind of have been working on that since decades now. Uh, but teaching mobility is kind of like don't have this, uh, this good structure yet. Uh, so, uh, so perhaps we could think about uh, some kind of like mobility windows, similar what we are talking about in, in uh, teaching uh, in student exchange. So for example, one week in each uh, semester when it's kind of mobility week and then institution. And here is what Ignacio said, I think it's super important that we, we have to think about uh, the institutions and uh, their motivation. And uh, perhaps just keep one, one week open every semester for mobility and then have blog seminars for, uh, uh, inco from incoming teachers, for example. And then uh, make free uh, outgoing teachers uh, for, uh, for actually for outgoing. Uh, because I, for, for me, that was always the, the biggest challenge actually that the, the, the host institute uh, really struggled to find the, the place uh, for me. Uh, why I usually couldn't go only in my uh, fall holiday, basically. Uh, uh, so, uh, so basically uh, from my, my, my holiday, actually, I, I worked a week because that was the easy, easiest time just to take out, but it's kind of like not really healthy. Uh, so, so that's what I mean that, uh, that we really should kind of free uh, a week each semester for mobility and then it would be kind of like uh, make sense for the institution, for the teacher, uh, uh, for both institutions. So, so we really have to kind of like find the structure of this uh, uh, teacher mobility because I think it's still very kind of uh, very flexible, which is good. But on the other hand, it's, it's that, that's the main difficulty how to find, uh, find place in the curriculum. So uh, where, where I'm going, they already have their curriculum for that uh, uh, semester. So how to, how to find place for me uh, uh, to teach and also for my own institution how, how, how to find uh, uh, people who would teach my courses and if I don't do that then I have to go in my holiday which is ridiculous. Thank you Monica. So Luca, for you what is the, the biggest challenge? Well, uh, for quality teaching mobility I should say that the biggest challenge is to increase the quality to increase the quality of the mobility by selecting the projects submitted by the staff, the teaching agreements in the calls. Uh, let me explain. As I said before, teaching mobility is held within a framework of extant knowledge between the members of the staff on the two sides. This is obvious. However, sometimes it may lead to a routinary exchange. I mean, uh, there is some people that goes every year, every single year, every given summer or spring to Spain and the Spanish colleague is coming, the same colleague is coming every, uh, this is a fictitious example of course, but it may happen that we have routinaries. Uh, so, this leads, in my view, to a lacking of quality because what is customary, what is customized is not even challenging. And as a person in charge of the mobility and of its quality that is awaited by the National Commission, uh, I have to deal, and I, I think we have to deal carefully with it. That may be an issue. Balancing different perspectives. I mean, from one side, a continuity in the relationship between higher education institutes 
is a good option. But from the other side, we should choose in order to maintain and to improve the quality to alternate the staff which will benefit of the mobility. So our rotation, in my view, leads to an increasing quality of the mobility. It is inside the program. It is, let's say, included. This principle of rotation is included by the, by the program. Another principle that we respect is the evaluation of the mobility project and mainly of the added value that they bring to both the institutions, in my view, to my institution, of course, the added value, uh, the impact, the dissemination. I mean, um, in this form, I've seen also some questions on the chat about that. A teaching training mobility, a mixed mobility with the, that with the four hours of teaching and the four hours of training, so where half of time is devoted to to developing common didactical paths and projects is highly evaluated by our selection committee. We, even if this kind of mobility is less common, I think that it should increase because um, it's easier to teach and it's easier to develop an added value with a mixed mode, with the training, teaching, mobility. However, summarizing, at Roma 3, I can talk about my own experience in my <laughs> university, we make a real selection based upon an independent evaluation of the projects, uh, regardless of the position of the teaching staff involved. So uh, a full professor is evaluated uh, as a young, a young researcher uh, on the exclusive basis of the teaching, teaching program. Uh, and in order to increase the quality, the mixed mobility, the teaching training mobility is highly appreciated. And obviously, all our calls are public. We are uh, earlier today. We were uh, thinking about the new call for the for the teaching mobility with the independent commission and so on. So. Uh, in order to increase the quality, we have to increase the transparency and the and the uh, uh, peer evaluation of the projects, and to uh, eliminate or um, I mean decrease the routine, hmm? the, the the fact that uh, everybody I mean the routine is uh, leading to a lacking of uh, quality, and we have to. Uh, make it decrease dramatically. Okay. Uh, Vratislav, what is for you the, the biggest challenge? Definitely the timing is up there with the biggest challenges. Like Monica said, that we really should select some part of the year which our curricula would be much more appreciative of and even the students for the future. But the most important factor I wanted to tackle was something that Luca already touched, which was only not only the routine, which is the important factor, but also the motivation of the academics for such form of mobility. Because I think that with that comes the question of having a safe route, just like a place that they are either keen on going all the time because they have good contacts, they're already established, good friends, whatever, they already tried it twice, they know that it will work just the third time, but it's not only this, but it's only a question also of the junior and senior academics. Sometimes like the senior academics are creating these pathways and really talking about these opportunities to their juniors and then when they are becoming the new teachers, they are going through these pre-selected safe routes created by their superiors or by their peers, basically, so to say. They are not all the time motivated to really try to branch out and find some new contacts and try some new institutions or new places, which in the end would be much more beneficial for the home institutions because it will be enlarging the web of contacts for the future. And with that also comes the question of the quality of teaching mobility, because just like Luca said, when you are doing something all the time, then it becomes something that you are very used to and you are not that innovative in this regard. So where, whereas when you are at the new place and you are forced to really tackle new challenges, sometimes the innovation comes with it 
and also the evaluation then should be there because they need to have that that information how well they did right or what can be changed for the future especially the junior academics need that for the quality of teaching mobility to to be there and also the question of age because sometimes at charles university we were much more used to seeing the senior academics be the ones that usually tackle the topic of teaching mobility while the juniors were much more concerned with the science and not that much with the teaching. So I would also see as a challenge for entry Central Europe, the motivation of the junior academics to, to really branch out from these pre-selected routes. Thank you. Uh, we thank you. And now before going to the last uh, series of questions, I would ask uh, Ignacio, whether you would like to add something to what we have discussed so far. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Well, first, uh, it's me. It wasn't a presentation speaking. My video didn't work, so uh, and I didn't notice. Um, so there is a person behind the voice. Um, uh, thank you very much for all the comments and the experiences of the different universities. Um, we know that uh, we are on the same ship, we're on the same vessel on this because this, what uh, Luca, what uh, Vratislav and Monica have mentioned are situations that were at the very beginning of our discussions in the project as the University of Alcala is a member of it. So uh, someone in the, in, the, in the chat has asked about the distinction between Hunter and Sika in the platform. Let's put it in a different way. Without avoiding the traditional mobilities that Luca has mentioned and the networks that have been created throughout time between our scholars and teachers, uh, our aim is to help rethinking the engine behind the teaching mobility. It should be sometimes the universities themselves, faculties, departments, designing modules, new curricula, to go on the market and seek these teaching mobilities coming from different other countries and financed by the Erasmus program. Doing that, we will have solved many questions on motivation. We will have solved many questions on quality assurance. Because imagine just simply the platform that uh, we are testing nowadays. It's not only about telling someone that he or she can come to Alcala for a few days to teach on European history. No, we have thought also that brief periods of time of teaching requires innovative techniques of teaching. It's not the same. Some other members in the audience have mentioned about the virtual teaching mobility exchanges, particularly in this context of COVID-19. We don't know exactly what is going to happen in a new program about these virtual teaching mobilities. But we know that virtual teaching is pretty, much, pretty high in the agenda of our universities to survive the present situation, but also in the commission with the different um, documents published yesterday that I mentioned in my... So, uh, in Alcala, when we thought in creating a pilot to test not only a platform, but our ideas, some ideas that we have been discussing today, we created what Monica mentioned. We are going to stop the classes for one week in one degree. That one week, we will welcome teachers from abroad in a very fixed program that soon we will publish um, as hunters in the web, in the platform of the teaching mobility. And we will propose them the different formats according to which they are going to participate in our classes and in our activities. Sometimes in a form of seminar or a workshop, big conferences and so. And we secure the attendance accredited to the course of our students because we think that it's a way of enriching our degrees and our modules and courses. It's the best way we have, together with others, but a very important, to go beyond in our policy of internationalization at home. So, just concluding my, my, my remarks, instead of being the initiative force, just the teacher who wants to go elsewhere because they have a friend or a colleague in a research project, Bratislav mentioned that, that here it's not always clear uh, uh, sometimes the activities. Next to that, we want to discuss a new path. That's the reason why 
each university should think about itself, how, how far they can adopt these initiatives. And they don't need to be identical in any country. In our case, it's going to be a course of six credits, six ECTS credits. However, it can be something different. It can be blended mobility for the student and also for the teacher. Let's see what happened with virtual exchange, teaching exchange mobilities. So, just to conclude with the hunter, the seeker and the host, is just to give motivation to participate in an holistic way around this concept of teaching mobility as it is in the program, in the Erasmus Plus program. Thank you. We thank you, Ignacio. So now let's uh, go to the last question. Uh, and after that, we'll take questions from the audience. And the last question would be, what would be the ideal teaching mobility for you? Uh, how it would look like in the future. Uh, so, Monica, would you like to address this question? I think we are at a, a different uh, point now. Uh, I would like to go back to this problem of uh, routine, what you mentioned, and maybe as a, as a teacher, I would uh, kind of like challenge this, uh, because my experience is that, uh, that you actually uh, it's not routine, so you are not doing the same thing. You are building up relationships, you are building up trust, uh, you are kind of going back and cooperate better than the previous year. I mean, if this routine would be true, then, then what are you doing? I mean, I'm teaching the same courses every fall in, at my own university, but thanks God I'm not doing all the same uh, again and again. Uh, so uh, it, it doesn't really, uh, it's not necessary that you already had the, the uh, relationship with those partners before. So I, had, I, I, I actually have a, an experience, a great experience, experience with the university uh, in the UK and first I really basically just come from the street uh, so I just wrote them as an email and then I, I went back and again and again and this kind of became deeper and deeper uh, as they learned what I am an expertise on and I learned how they work, how their curriculum works so, so it's not necessarily so bad. So I just wanted to challenge this, that uh, I'm not sure that actually from the teacher's side, you really want to go every year to somewhere else and start all over the, again the whole thing. Rather, perhaps you, you had a good experience, you want to deepen that, and that, that could be also totally relevant and, uh, and great. So, uh, so I, I would challenge that, that kind of like, uh, uh, routine, so it's not necessarily a routine. Uh, so going back to the uh, to the idea of teaching, I mean, my idea would be something which is kind of more structured in the sense that have more uh, more structured space, which uh, which Ignacio uh, mentioned that it's, it's absolutely possible. Uh, I think we have to harmonize at least with uh, with partner institutions because then we have this we need the same week. <laughs> so so we need some kind of harmonization, maybe not kind of EU level harmonization, but at least with your, uh, your own partners, uh, you need some kind of harmonization. And uh, I think it's uh, when we talk about the ideal teaching, it's, it's again a question of uh, for whom? Uh, because I think for, uh, uh, for the seeker institution, so the host institution, I think the ideal situation where you bring in something which they don't have. Uh, so basically, in, uh, I have uh, many experiences with that. I'm doing a lot of uh, trainings and, uh, and partners were happy, oh, you can do that. So we give you one day and you do your whole day training because we don't really have that. Uh, it's kind of nice and interesting and nice to work with the students there, but it's, it's not necessarily too much for, for the teacher because you are doing the same thing as what you do at home. Uh, so. Uh, uh, but for the host institute, I, I think it's quite important because you pull in expertise which, uh, which you don't have and uh, your students can benefit from that. Uh, for, the, for the teacher and in a way also for the sending institution, I think uh, uh, the idea is, is some kind of cooperation. Uh, so uh, in, in cooperation in a deeper sense, uh, so that you, are, you have a partner teacher uh, or you have a partner program and you kind of develop together what you will do there. 
for me, the best experience is very really co-teaching basically courses. Uh, but you needed that kind of like previous experiences and kind of deeper uh, knowing each other and knowing each other expertise and kind of trust also because if you go into a classroom together you have to kind of like work together uh, so but uh, for me as a teacher uh, that was the, the kind of best experiences in uh, most rewarding i learned the, the most from that uh, so that's uh, that's that depends. So that's what I wanted to highlight is that uh, we have to define actually that, uh, you know, the idea to whom, because it can be different depending on the, on the different uh, positions in this uh, process. But, uh, but uh, kind of being more realistic, I think the, the way we should go is kind of like trying to find uh, a better structure and, uh, and what we already discussed, uh, so that a place and a time for this whole mobility and then it will work just much better. Okay, thank you, Monica. Luca, what's the ideal teaching mobility for you? The ideal teaching mobility in the future? Well, uh, first, just a short answer to Monica. I did not say that routine is necessarily bad. I only said that in some cases it may lead to a lacking of quality. In my experience as an institutional coordinator, I envisaged this risk risk that uh, mobility becomes a comfort zone that is not challenging. Well, there are other programs different than teaching mobility to develop a continuous and long cooperation among higher education institutions. However, probably you're right. Well, future. Future has always been unpredictable and it's even more so these days. We can have two paths ahead to act as if nothing is happening and continue with normal procedures. And then we have to suspend or cancel them in the event of an emergency. Or the other way is to ask ourselves about the need to go on a completely new path and to go down the path for innovation right now. For my part, I think this is the only way forward. <clears throat> but we should be very careful to govern the process. I mean that mobility as we know it, real, personal, with real people exchanging real trips, real journeys, real experiences, cannot be totally abandoned in favor of the virtual one. Not quite, at least. Uh, to teach an online class to a distant audience it's easy. There's not even a need to put on a mobility program. As we know, we have been able to experiment in recent times. The potential of virtual teaching uh, very often does not correspond to uh, a good quality. Moreover, the mobility of teachers does not end in the moment of the class. Uh, also, visiting in-person facilities, visiting workshops, understand how the work of the staff in the other higher education institution is organized, uh, see and I would say touch the solutions that the institutes adopted for the problems that arise from time to time. Everything is part of the experience of mobility and of its quality. Understanding the experience of other institutions, uh, understanding their responses to challenges and problems, assessing them in person, whether these solutions are effective or not, and how successfully they can be replied and adapted into a different reality. All these are processes from which a better quality of higher education can result. So the future is going obviously through an implementation of the distance learning and the distance teaching, but this can result in a, I mean, Mm, 
the quality would not benefit. The, the, the overall quality of the mobility would not benefit from the exclusive um, online teaching and virtual mobility. Because there are also other um, topics connected to the mobility that, as Monica said, are not only the class. So we have, we have to be very careful to uh, deal with this process. However, as I said at the beginning, future is unpredictable. Uh, we, have, we, we need to continue developing our programs and go forward looking for the better quality overall. Thank you, Luca. Bratislav, what do you think? Well, the ideal world with the ideal like, teaching mobility is such where we have the two schemes, the two options and two versions of the mobility. The classical approach for the mobility like we were used to with the teachers going to the institution for a semester for a longer time. And then the modern approach, the after, after pandemic approach with the blended format or the virtual exchange or call it however you want to. And the ideal style is where the academics can freely choose between the two because they are well known in both of these schemes and their opportunities are there for both for them to take it. So they are perfectly capable of going there for the mobility just for a short time, then coming back, switching the class to the online format and transferring themselves from the teachers to e-moderators of an online professional discussion based on such topic that they are used to teaching. So when we will get there that the teachers and not only it will not be the question of age, it will not be the question of preference, it will be really the free choice of however they want to structure their course, that will be the true future. And I think that that's something that's connected with the topic of staying too long at the same time, at the same place. Then in that type, they will be the door openers. They will be opening doors in new institutions, not only for themselves, not only thinking for themselves, but for the whole faculties, universities, states. Basically, they will come back and we will need a platform where the teacher can go, for example, to the University of Alcala as a historian, teach history, but then he can come into contact with the colleagues from different departments. And usually nowadays, if he doesn't know anybody from home institutions with the same interests, then these contacts are lost. But if we would have a platform that he can really open the doors for his colleagues and to really bring up these topics, which is really something that was already tackled here many times, like a web platform, web page, anything where we can really come up with, find the particular colleagues at the home institution and basically bring them into contact with these new people, these new friends, this new group of contacts that he established at the new university, then we are really stepping into the future. So door openers and really the possibility to choose between the two formats or have a real preference based on not only the possibilities, but based on his own choice or her own choice. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all. I think uh, now it's uh, time, well, to take some questions. There are so many and, um, well, they are mixed with questions uh, regarding the previous section. But anyway, uh, I see here a question which was raised by Petra Moser Mergard and uh, also by Nino Uschilili. Sorry for my pronunciation. Well, the question, and that's the important thing, is have you taken into consideration the need for an IIA for teacher mobility? Yeah, I think it's a. Um, it's an important one. Uh, now we are not going to respect the order. Ignacio, unfortunately, has to uh, go out. No, he's still with us. But I think he mentioned that he would uh, go. So, Ignacio, if you would like to say very briefly to address this question, because you are leaving and... Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah th thank you, Sharin. Um, uh, it has been taken into consideration the, uh, the need of an interinstitutional agreement. Um, 
Uh, I believe in the chat there has been, Aniko has answered a little bit about uh, the presence of those questions in the guidelines uh, to organize the mobility and so on and so forth. And I know that there was a time, because we know that uh, there is no need for interinstitutional agreement for the mobility for, uh, uh, for uh, uh, the job shadowing and so on and so forth. There was a discussion about the need for, for, for And you will see that it's no problem and we will not create a lot of hard work for our administrative departments to develop those interinstitutional agreements. Actually, if we put teaching mobility at the center of mobility programs in the Erasmus Plus program, we will see that it's possible to enter into interinstitutional agreements just for the mobility of teachers and see if that can progress to further cooperation between them. Uh, so instead, I have to leave now. I'm very thankful to the conveners. I'm very thankful for the for, for uh, uh, the colleagues that participated in the in this panel, and to Sorin and to the attendees. And if there isn't any further question that you want to put to the different uh, universities that we are involved in this project, please contact us, and we will be extremely happy to to answer them and to create the synergies to see the platform. Not, not as an end product, but as an open forum for the discussion of the presence of the team mobility in the future. Thank you very much. Okay, we thank you, Ignacio, for your presentation and also for all your involvement in this uh, uh, project. Thank you again. And uh, if somebody else would like to address this uh, question, Monica, Ratislav, Luca, if not, I think it's a, it's a great idea that actually uh, it, it, if we can kind of uh, uh, work in another way around and, uh, and just let people to develop their own. Uh, I mean, I think it, it's happening. So uh, many times actually teachers are bringing in new partners and then we develop a, uh, an agreement uh, with this partner institute. So it, it's actually, it's happening in reality. Uh, maybe it's uh, uh, just kind of thinking uh, differently about it. But I wanted to add uh, as, a, as an important thing, and I think, uh, and again, uh, some kind of other framework to think about that I think what is missing or it's not really so well developed for teachers also these uh, uh, developmental opportunities. So we only talked about uh, uh, the teaching opportunities, but I think also, uh, uh, it would be another thing to think about it uh, because tough weeks are so popular for uh, uh, for university staff and uh, uh, as, uh, as since I'm uh, involved of uh, of doing this offering this I see the applications and many times actually uh, teachers are uh, applicants because uh, they would like to go for this kind of one week training. Uh, there is in many organizations doing a lot of summer school for PhD students, so they have this kind of opportunity. But I think uh, as a teacher from time to time, uh, that would be uh, really great to, uh, to go for further education. And we have also it for grammar school teachers in the European level. So we have in other levels, we do have this, but in university teacher level, we don't really have a good uh, uh, kind of system. And, uh, uh, and I think that summer schools, so this kind of frameworks also have a lot of uh, uh, opportunity which which teachers would need like networking uh, and uh, and building a relationship with other other uh, teachers uh, so I think it, it we should also think about it that uh, that could be also promoted more and and think about it uh, how to promote more this kind of uh, training opportunities for uh, for academics uh, and uh, and not only the opportunity to go and teach because sometimes as a teacher, you need some kind of like, uh, uh, input also uh, from time to time and inspiration and networking. And, and of course we have the, uh, have the uh, conferences, but it's, it's another thing. Again, then you have to give. And I think sometimes teachers need uh, to receive new ideas and new methods. And, uh, and uh, so we, we should also develop that part, I think, of the, of the teacher mobility. Okay, thank you, Monica. 
Luca or Bratislav, would you like to add something here? I, I, I've lost the connection for, um, for a minute, so uh, I, I don't know exactly if there is a, a question or if we have to talk about the policy steps uh, to boost teaching mobility. Yeah, the question was uh, the need for a IIA for teacher mobility. If okay. all of us had considered that, but uh, uh, we can move forward. We have we have so many other questions. Okay, that's questions. Right. Thank you. And that's uh, right. well, we have to stop um, like in nine minutes. So. Right, no more than two. with uh, with another panelist. So. Right. right. Um, so, so one myself, the... maybe if I can. Yeah, yeah, please. I like the the door openers are of course there, but the more the merrier for me. So thank you, Monica, for for the for this information. But we have a great question in the chat about the blended human benefits and whatever blended mobility will bring for the future and how it's creating a peaceful Europe through the understanding between the nationalities and also how it's affecting the, the I don't know, the psyche of, of each human being that is going through such form of, of mobility. I would say that for this, the huge amount of work has already been done by the European University Foundation people they did publish a lot of really interesting documents about not only the, the psychological aspect of virtual exchange slash blended mobility, which is really interesting read I can't recommend, but also this question of better understanding between the countries and between the human beings that are going through even short form of mobility. So, which is not, it's much more concerned with the students, of course, usually than with the teachers or with the academic staff. But even there is a potential of, of course, nobody cannot say that he knows every country and every culture. So there is a huge enrichment for the future. So I think that this benefit is there. And for whoever asked this question, I can really recommend the EU web documents on this topic, which are really well done and put together. Yeah, thank you, Vratislav. Now, uh, this is a very uh, actual, uh, even acute question, you know, blended uh, virtual mobility, that's the thing right now in terms of mobility. So we have many other um, questions. Um, one is uh, directed to Monica and, you know, you mentioned trust. And um, a question is, how do you signal trustworthiness to build an initial partnership for a new mobility collaboration. So how do you know that would be a trusty uh, collaboration from the very beginning? I, I think that, uh, uh, that that one way, what, uh, what we just mentioned, that, uh, that actually a, a professor, a teacher is bringing in the, the partnership. Uh, so basically that, that is already an original kind of like trust and then, then the institute uh, start, to, uh, start to build that trust with it. Uh, but uh, it, it's, uh, for example, when we uh, started from really from the, from the beginning, uh, then uh, we have a lot of meetings actually and that, that was a long time ago. So I think it would be actually easier now and talk about the curriculum, to talk about uh, I think uh, that's something uh, which is uh, that that's how uh, academics uh, can kind of build trust that uh, that we know that the other that the partner is actually kind of like talking about this, uh, the same literature, the same methods and so on. So basically just uh, just really talk about uh, uh, talk about what we are doing, but you need a personal personal relationship to that. I think it it might be easier nowadays because you can do it on Zoom or whatever platform and you don't have to travel, but I, I, I very much uh, would like to kind of like uh, say, I agree with Luca about that that a, a personal mo so being there uh, is is really a, a kind of five six days experience. I mean, you are sitting in the cafeteria and you see how 
how teachers and, uh, and students are walking around and you are participating on all kinds of events which are going on uh, at that university for uh, during that week and uh, you are talking uh, with your colleagues about the, the research. I mean, it's, it's, uh, uh, that's why I think, I mean, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I don't think so uh, that if university we go back to normal in the sense that uh, that all this blended learning and all this kind of online i think it's it's really i'm missing the human uh, human relationship and uh, you know I, I i don't see the students face only some of them when i'm teaching online and uh, and so it's it's i i i think it's just a temporary thing and uh, and we we should be kind of careful that um, policy makers don't push us into a corner where we don't want to be uh, so saying that oh actually you can do everything online so you know you don't even need a university building anymore because just work from home and you can teach whoever you want to teach from home i mean we, we really have to kind of like uh, be careful with this kind of things that uh, what we are doing now it's it's, it's just not the ideal and uh, and and we need human connection and uh, and see each other in person and see the students in person and uh, and also i think the the mobility part is is really important uh, you know all these like little thing I, I i give you one example i went to to a university in madrid uh, very beginning of a uh, of the semester for monitoring when I was vice dean, and uh, the vice rector was kind of like uh, walking with me in the campus, and uh, and the cleaning lady came uh, on the corridor, and the vice rector actually stood and uh, and uh, stopped and uh, gave a hug and kiss to the cleaning lady and asked about how was her summer and so on, and for me it was it was the most important experience about the whole trip actually this kind of uh, uh, this kind of warmth and relationship and uh, and uh, not hierarchical uh, kind of thing so uh, so it sometimes just happens by chance but you have to be there for that uh, it it doesn't happen through zoom you know uh, so and and all the relationship between the colleagues how they work uh, all these, uh, you really have to experience it. So it's, it's, it's very valuable and you bring back a lot of things to you. So what you like, you bring it back to your university and that's how it's actually kind of like this whole, you know, what is the, the culture of this uh, European higher education area is kind of like developing like this, uh, that you bring some ideas back. Uh, and for some ideas you might didn't like and you don't bring back, but still kind of like we're learning from each other. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. That's a big challenge. Uh, I mean, especially now where virtuality is the new reality. I mean, we are interesting mixture between rationality and emotions and we need emotivity. We need human connection. We are social beings, right? Aristotle says that we are zone political. Um, anyway, we have left only two minutes uh, and um, uh, I mean, Luca mentioned that about the, the policy level, uh, how can we boost or how can we increase teaching mobility? So uh, if Luca and Bratislav would like to have a few last words about this, because I think that's important. What do you think? How can we do it? Well, I can start and I will be very brief. First, uh, um, uh, universities ha can promote better than uh, as have they have done until now, somewhere, uh, in my experience, I know that is this way, the professional recognition of mobility. Um, I've tried to explain, I mean, uh, recognition of these periods of mobility exist but uh, sometimes it's very complex, at least in our case, uh, so they have to be increased. And this is the role of the university. Uh, then the common management and this software, this platform that has been presented today is very important because I was thinking about a shared platform of the nominees of project evaluations and so on must be fostered in all ways. Um, and trust the evaluation of mobility projects 
to an independent and external evaluator or a peer evaluation or blind uh, evaluation. Uh, but the real political action should be to continue to encourage physical mobility, to question virtual mobility, which certainly has advantages, but which also presents risks, as we learned from our colleagues. So those who make political decisions must be aware that virtual mobility leads to a process of entropy, to a loss of information and energy. And um, there is a mantra that says that virtual mobility seems to break down the boundaries. However, in fact, the virtual mobility moves the boundaries towards ourselves and builds new walls, new ones, new boundaries around individuals in our rooms. So the, those who make political decisions must be aware that virtual mobility leads to a loss of information and, uh, and that's it. Okay, thank, thank you very much, Luca. Uh, we really have to, to stop. So, Bratislav, if you have just a final comment or something to, to be added right now. Thank you for the great question and I think it's not only a quest for the academicians but also for the, the administration of the universities, directorates of the universities. The task will be on us to better PR the new opportunities that will really boost up the motivation of the academicians for the future and for the new wave of things to come. Thank you very much for the webinar. Uh -huh. Thank you. No, I thank you for this great discussion. It's a lot of more which has to be said in connection with that. So thank you, Monica. Thank you, Luca. Thank you, Bratislav. And thank you, Ignacio, yourself. Thanks to our hosts. And I hope that we, you know, foresee some new passes for teaching mobility. And uh, at the end, thank you again for uh, uh, Unica and the wonderful team, Luciano. Our president, I think, is with us. Uh, and also for our host, the Edwards Florand University. It uh, was with us at least at the very beginning, uh, their vice rector, Imre. I don't know if it's here for the final words, but anyway, I'm closing uh, here the section and opening the final <laughs> comments, if they are any. Thank you again for everything. It was a wonderful uh, meeting. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much uh, for this wonderful uh, session. Uh, the closing remarks uh, are just about uh, thanking all the speakers, all the panelists for the wonderful presentation discussions. Thank you very much for the participants to actively contributing to our discussion. Um, I think we really reached upon so many important aspects on, of teaching mobility and its quality. I want to just emphasize that let's uh, really use this platform and our ideas um, um, actively and uh, use the platform for new ideas, new activity types. Uh, and, and from the practical point of view, uh, we will uh, send all the participants um, a satisfaction survey and a link to the platform and uh, a feedback uh, link to the feedback uh, form. Uh, please contribute and please stay tuned with the Teacher the Erasmus project and its um, following activities and teaching weeks and conferences. And thank you very much again. Good, that's it. If no other final words, I think we have to close here. Thank you again. Thank you again to everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.